So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset some of these edge loops a little bit. Just to make that bolt shape a little bit more irregular. Although I think I'm not going to do this. I'm going to uh, I'm going to discuss this further with the with the concept artist Vivian because we might just add a bit more fine detail and have th this the style is not yet well defined in terms of surfacing and materials and render uh, just rendering style so making the bolt really irregular to the point that it's not even recognizable as a bolt anymore might not be the best idea we'll have to check on that Uh, yes, view, 3D cursor, I want to have the 3D cursor over here in the middle. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to add some more materials over here. One of them is the blue-gray, which is going to be assigned to this object to vary it up a little bit. And then oh, I can also keep tweaking. Que keep tweaking this. <laughs> Push this in. There we go. Not yet. Not ever. <laughs> Okay, so in the draw over, there's also some extra concepts that I don't have right now right next to me. I should get them. Okay, and I am back with, after after having a little chat with the concept artist about these topics, uh, I got an extra little uh, draw over, like paint over for the backpack. So this is very helpful. And some extra notes on the design of the bolts. And actually like, uh, a note on the hair solution over here being actually exactly what we want. So I'm just going to bring that back right now. Just pushing the hair around. Oh, I should increase the smooth brush strength, uh, smooth brush strength a little bit. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Um, and yes making sure this kind of fills in this shape over here. I'm also going to uh, push this in. Um, just since I already want this to be covered in some shape or form, it would be a bit of loss of volume over here and the hair would move on top of it right over here in a way. This is at least somewhat how I imagine it, but we can just leave this like like this for now. I'm still using the term we as if this is a tutorial. <laughs> but hey, maybe you're following along and making something too. Um, yes. I think in terms of the model, it's actually kind of far, nice. I'm just gonna move this around a bit more. I think the turtleneck should be even more visible over here. And in terms of the mask, I think I'm actually going to fill the cap by just moving this in. I'm going to... Uh... Interesting, I think the mirror modifier is not... Oh, it is, okay, of course. Of course. So this is nicely moving inside. Same thing over here and here. So the thickness is really well visible. And then over here the hair can be moved in a bit further. I might actually just add an extra hair strand over here or something. Like an extra spike. 
just as an extra touch. That sort of thing. But this all just still needs a bit of work. I think in terms of it, design adjustments, I still just need to tweak the backpack. And then for the for the hair, I'm actually going to do something different right now. I still got the original shape for sculpting. I kept that if I ever need to go back, but I also kept the original um, model that I started from. And I'm actually going to duplicate this. I'm gonna move it back over here. Um, let's just make this one yeah, let's just keep it white for now. I'm going to sculpt this one into the same pose that the sculpted hair is in. And this is going to be our rigging dummy mesh. The reason for that is because since the topology on this thing is way cleaner than anything that we would decimate out of the sculpt, it would be super nice to use this one actually for the rigging process for now. I'm just gonna move this further. I'm actually going to use the, the topology tool to relax the topology a little bit and continue to move things around. I'm also gonna decrease the strength on the, on the smooth brush because with this density on the mesh, it's going to be insanely strong. This is essentially it in general proportions. This is what I need. And then I can just select this guy, select another hair object, control L materials, and there we go. I can move this over to temp and I can just like continue working with this for now. Just a little bit. Just for the purposes of having a nice and somewhat reliable dummy mesh. But let's actually look how this, yeah, how does this look without the subdivision surface modifier? This is the actual geometry that will be rigged. But yes, it's important to see it subdivided. Yes, that is kind of, this is kind of what we want. Um, the only thing missing is this also needs to cap off the rest of it. Yeah, I'm gonna just turn on in front. There we go. Subdivision in front off. Yes. Yes, this is it. I'm gonna enable temp again. Hide this one though. And hide this one. I think this is a good reference. So let's disable temp again. So this is a mesh that can be sort of sent off to rigging already, I would say. It's not perfect, but I still have some time to tweak stuff. Uh, yes, there was a note about the bolt. Uh, I can shift around some of these edges just a tiny bit, making it a little bit irregular. but not too extremely. I think in the, in the draw over it was pretty extreme. I would still like to just have this sort of register as a bolt. You can also go into sculpt mode to fine tweak this a bit further. Let's 
something like this, I guess. It's a kind of weirdly misaligned bolt. But it still has that octagon shape. Something like that. Okay, cool. Um, the backpack. I did show the concept, so I'm kind of going for something like this instead now. So this is kind of nice. Um, so it's going to have that big bolt over here as a button. And it's going to have these faces over here assigned the blue-gray instead of this one. It's pretty interesting. Oh, this is also fascinating. The bevel doesn't quite know which face is going to get the new map, uh, the, the new material. So it's beveling the edges. It's not quite sure. Ah, face strength mode new affected? Nope. Um, hmm. This is pretty interesting, so I might need to apply that modifier before I can finalize the materials on it. I mean, the modifier would be applied anyway before the model would be finished. Uh, yes. So the element that's missing right now is... the bolt... and the additional colors over here because I'm going to add another material it's going to be the huh, where did the cyan go oh there is no cyan I guess this would be the blue ah, it's actually a new color interesting So I'm just going to assign this blue gray, but I'm going to duplicate this material and make this cyan. Cyan as in a blue that is a bit more going towards green. Actually, I, may, I think I might be misreading the color a little bit. Yes, uh, let me bring that over to my display over here. It's close, could be a bit darker. Since I'm using my home laptop right now, which is not being properly calibrated, uh, I'm not trusting the colors that much if I'm looking at a different, uh, an entirely different monitor right now. So, but I think this should be good. Um, okay, cool. Next up, the bolt. Uh, this is again going to be sort of octagon shape, but in the concept it's actually missing one edge. So I have to see how that goes. Scale this down, rotate it, scale it down, place it somewhere where it's supposed to be, somewhere around here. I'm just going to switch this to local actually. There we go. And scale it down even more along the Z, its own z-axis. And give this the orange material. There we go. What I'm now going to do is I'm already going to misalign the edges a little bit. I think this one is going to be a lot more chaotic. But again, I would still at least like to keep the eight sides. Huh. So I'm basically just sliding the edges over here. Mm, yes, uh, then this gets scaled down a little bit. I'm going to push this a bit further forward and I'm actually going to bevel these two edges. Ah, before I do that, apply scale. Otherwise the bevel is going to be weirdly offset in scale. Like that. 
gonna select this. Let's look at it from the side because now it's kind of hovering and I'm gonna push it back just a little bit. I want to have it make contact but I don't want to have it fully intersect, like visibly intersect. Um, I think I might actually take these edges and bevel them too. There we go. Uh, shade smooth, auto smooth, just to get some of the smooth faces. So just like with every edge, uh, I explained this before. <laughs> I hope I won't be, I won't start to repeat myself too much because I'm going to model this over consecutive days. Not even consecutive, uh, multiple days, sometimes a little bit apart and spend also some time editing these videos. So uh, I won't be remembering what exactly I said the day before or the week before. Let's see. I'm actually gonna merge these guys. Uh, let's actually undo this and merge these already. I don't want these extra edges going down into the center. And then I can just inset this freely. Now definitely want to have this on local because I'm going to move these along this these vertices along that surface and the local axis is aligning it with the object rotation. Uh, yes. Oh, I might actually need some additional edges. So let's just bring another one over here and move this one up. And now I have the shape I want. I'm actually gonna scale it up and extrude it in, scale it down a little bit, select that edge, bevel it. Yes, that's kind of what I want. Um, I am going to select this edge as well and mark it as sharp just to be sure that this face is definitely smooth and flat. Mm, yes. I'm also going to select these guys. Bam, 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 bam. And mark sharp. There we go. Uh, okay, it's not fully what I want actually. This r entire ring of edges over here, I don't want it to be ah, to be marked sharp. No, ah, God damn it. Uh, there we go. Actually, this too. He's over here. Clear sharp. Same thing over here, uh, at mark seam, clear sharp. There we go. I'm gonna scale this up again actually. And I'm actually going to make a new material just because why not? Oh wait, is this still called hair? Okay, orange. Yes, yes, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. I had this material two times. Okay. Let's just pick orange, the duplicate, and make it darker. A lot darker. Call this orange dot dark. And then assign this face to it. Uh, not that one. Oh, it wasn't. It was just dark. Okay, cool. And I think I'm going to scale it up a little bit. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, that should be good. And now I'm going to actually copy and apply mirror modifier over here. And yeah. Essentially, let's check if this is still centered. Yes. Uh, apply the bevel modifier now because I really want to have these nailed down. What is going on? There's some intersecting going on. Uh, of course, bisect. Keeping that active, definitely. Yes, okay. Selecting this edge. All the way around. And I'm going to assign this one the blue gray as well. There we go. Uh, select everything shade smooth. That should be good. Oh yeah, I had some little notes as well. If I look at the, when I looked at the paint over these edges were actually beveled. So I want to have that as well. Yes, this gets the dark gray as well. It's just tiny things, but still. So is this ready? Um, oh yeah, there were some um, some notes about the style of the eye and the mouth. Not that I forget. And also, these guys should be modeled into the arms. So I'm actually just going to. Uh, Shift this around and kind of model it the way I originally had it. <laughs> so much for that. Um, bevel this, increase the segments by one. That way I should have enough. And just do the same thing as Kinda, as before. Hmm. Scale this one and these ones up a little bit along the normals with Alt-S. Yes. And select these and assign the, the orange material to it. Add another edge loop over here and here. So I can assign these faces as well and now there's going to be a nice dividing line over here of course I didn't even notice that these are supposed to be blue oops there we go I think I'm gonna scale these further in Uh, I'm not super happy with the shape. Yeah, that's more like it. This little balloon shape over there. Okay, cool. Uh, same thing over here. I might even just... Uh... Ah. Select this whole section, duplicate it, and bring it down over here. Yes. Hide it. I'm just going to select all of this and remove it. I'm going to move this a bit down just so it aligns somewhat with the 
center loop over here. This one I'm going to also scale along the z-axis to zero. Add another one over here, z, scale to z, zero. Add another one over here, scale along the z-axis, zero. And then, uh, can I easily select these two? Yes. Delete it. I'm actually going to delete these two and just bridge the two edges. Control E and bridge edge loop. Control E, bridge edge loop. Yeah, and it's already visible. These are not as well aligned as I would like. Let's just solve it by just sliding this two times in one direction, then in the other. Here we go. Same thing over here, sliding it a bit around. And over here, sliding. And then the same thing needs to be done over here again with that little bit of extra thickness. And an extra edge loop over here. These ones can be fanned out a bit more. And that is essentially it. With the turtle top, I don't mind if it's a separate mesh. I think that's actually quite fitting. Um, yes, I can also move this a bit down. Just so everything matches up quite nicely. Oh, and then again, over here, this escaped the mirror, uh, the middle axis. And this is essentially all the modeling we need for the rigging, I suspect. I want to tweak this a bit further, of course. And something I only noticed now, the inner shape over here is supposed to be also the blue-gray. That's pretty interesting. Aha, because it wraps all the way around. Yes. Actually, it's apparently supposed to be the cyan color. Oops. Yeah, so let's just get back into the mouth. So for this, I want to have a specific shape. I am going to bring up the concept right now. So just looking at the concept, we can see that there are some hard edges into in the mouth shape. It's not just a perfect sausage, like a perfect tube. And the eye also has a bit of harder corners to it. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to add that. With the eyes, it might be pretty simple. By just turning down, no, by turning down the resolution over here, yes. Like that, just having it on four. That might be enough. 
but it's not going to give a lot of play room. But yeah, maybe it's fine. And then for the mouth right now, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to add another circle curve. Um, and I'm going to uh, scale this one down. Switch this one over to vector. Vector. Uh, subdivide it. And then just move this around a little bit. Like this, I guess. And let's just uh, for now try it because we can add a bevel curve over here to define the shape of the object of the curve. So let's just scale this back up like this. And this profile is now exactly the one that we see on the cor on the on the other curve. So if I adjust this to be a bit more square, then I should have basically what I want. If I switch to shade smooth, of course it's not going to look right. What I need to do is I need to add a bit more resolution. So let's just subdivide this. and move these closer. There we go. Uh, what I am wondering right now, ah, let's just actually remove handles just want to see the curves over here. If I move this, this is the back edge. So I don't mind if this is a bit wider. Which edge is this one? Now that's already the inner one. So these are the two ones on the back. Nope. No, I think this is the one. Sometimes a bit hard to wrap your head around this on how exactly it works. But yes, this is what I want. Uh, maybe a bit thicker. Yes. That's essentially it for now. I can pass this over and continue with the hair and any other details that might arise. So see you then.